Hello, it's the last day of the year. So first of all, let me wish you a happy new year. I hope you all your wishes will come true and um, that you, it will be joyful. And I hope you will enjoy also my videos for the upcoming year. Um, and before I also continue, I want to say I'm going to take a sort of break over the next week. This means I will post videos about games that I'm watching. Uh, Man City Liverpool most first and foremost and whatever comes up that way but I will not do any dedicated top 10 videos or jersey reviews and I will not do blog posts I really want to take a week off and uh, enjoy with my family I hope you can understand that and after that I'm gonna pick it slowly up again and we'll go to back to my regular content but I think a little bit of a break is probably a good thing Today are my top 10 moments of the year and I decided, I mean my top moment I can personally is related to this blog is that I actually started these videos. I started up my channel again, I started blogging again, that was my top moment. But I said I'm gonna, um, uh, although it's very personal, I wanna um, focus it on actual things happening in the world of soccer and for that reason uh, it's not on there another moment that was released for me the click that you can actually get nice soccer jerseys for rather dirt cheap if you just look enough and you know where to look and uh, we have not looked at it in a video but for instance this Barcelona shirt 20 euros amazing uh, this Sampdoria shirt, 15, uh, blows my mind. So, and also, I mean, I got this PSG shirt that I wanted to have for a long time. I got it for, I think it was 25. I don't want to buy full price anymore, unless I really, really, really have to. So, for that reason, uh, those are two top moments that are very, very personal and related to, to, to this blog. Um, but let's talk about uh, moments and how did I choose them? Well, I basically spent uh, the last few days jotting a few things down and I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. I also looked more for storylines. So there's not only because otherwise the top moment would be the World Cup. But I looked more for plot lines throughout the year. And for that reason, um, excuse me if there are more World Cup entries than just a single one. And we'll start at number 10 with the World Cup, the Never Say Die Croatians. Um, I always said that Croatia has the potential to make a really, really deep run and they always fell sort of short. This year they managed to get it together and in kind of dramatic fashion. Um, they won the group with relative ease, um, the performance against Argentina. It was an even game, but you know, Argentina shot itself in, in the foot and Croatia was the better team uh, from the from, from beginning. But then uh, two penalty shootouts, they, make, they made a whole lot of work about getting to this final. Uh, I thought they were the better team against Denmark, but Denmark shut them down. They missed a penalty, they got in a penalty shootout. Subasic is uh, saving three. You again go in, into overtime against Russia, where you're also clearly the better team, but Russia pulls out two goals out of nowhere. And then, yeah, penalty shootout, Croatia wins again, making it only the second team in history to win two penalty shootouts at one World Cup. And um, it was bound to happen because Russia also went through in penalties. So uh, it's maybe not that... Now, it's still a big achievement, but, you know, it would have happened uh, this year. Against England, you really thought England had them in the bag. And then in the 60th minute, they get the equalizer from then on. It was only Croatia. They made it to the final. And I watched an Eric Cantona commissioner football video that says it's a... Croatia was in the World Cup final, tried... Uh, the World Cup final is like seducing... Oh woman or kind of playing up to a woman you play nice you do all the right things you're charming you are elegant and you make the right moves and then there comes the French guy and takes the girl away from you and that's exactly what happened to them 
they were bad of a half 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 an hour then France makes out of one shot on goal makes two goals uh, and then completely dominates it but I'm happy that you know when it was 4-1 that Croatia pulled one back I mean they got the equalizer but they pulled even one back to make it 4-2 to keep it uh, keep France a little bit straight um, and it was the better for it uh, this was one of the best World Cup finals though it was not a nail biter as, as most of them are um, it was an open and uh, even the atmosphere afterwards the Croatian president uh, woman being so heartfelt to ever to everyone croatia deserved to be in this world cup final uh in my office my croatian colleague he was all out of himself it was a great moment this year so the never they say die croatians definitely among my top 10. number nine is a little bit surprising to me but i really enjoy liverpool search first of all them making it to the champions league final um going past City, going past Roma, which hurt her hurt a little bit, but they were playing great soccer all year round. I mean, Klopp really got a great team together and Klopp's former team, Dortmund, also could fit in that story, story line um, now under the new coach, but it was only for half a year. I mean, Dortmund had a horrible uh, season last year. And now this year, we're closing it out. I mean, there's uh, they're really playing great and are well poised to win the championship uh, for the first time since 1990 and that would be uh, a big achievement uh, but most of all is uh, the emergence they had to give up players over the years mostly Barcelona I mean you they lost Coutinho at the beginning of the year and you don't feel it Firmino, Sané, uh, Salah great attack solid midfield and so super solid defense with Van Dijk who is probably the best player in the uh, Premier League right now uh really really great story and this team what really gets me is this team is unfazed even if there's a setback they keep on plowing away their style wonderful story line um would it be better if they won the Champions League final yes it would have been but you know Sergio Ramos took care of that final once again and so yeah there's another plot line there number eight the nation's league much derided i totally enjoyed it and i enjoyed it for multiple reasons first of all league a really served up some tasty ties both uh matchups between spain and england were absolutely wonderful matchups uh that were must sees for me uh the Netherla netherlands uh getting something at first they looked done and dusted then they beat germany and suddenly the Netherlands are fully into it. That was a great storyline for me. Um, uh, Switzerland making it out of that group was also, I mean, not that expected, but yeah. Uh, also that you have every day you have a matchup that you want to look forward to. The Spanish collapsing group A. Uh, they looked like they're going to cruise through, through a group and then England wins it. Because they win in Spain and uh, they even Spain even manages to lose to Croatia. That they beat up a 6-0 in Spain. A wonderful storyline, honestly. Then uh, in League B you had uh, Sweden make a comeback from out of nowhere uh, to qualify. You had um, Denmark dominating a group. Uh, you had Bosnia in there. You, uh, League C, shall I go on? Uh, the fight between Norway and Bulgaria... Yes, there should have been more perspectives there. It was really, it was really worth watching. Finland is making it League B. Finland. Who is Finland? And then uh, if you go League D, Gibraltar winning two games. That's what the Nations League is made for. You have also Kosovo making, uh, announcing itself on the stage. Uh, I absolutely enjoyed it. I even enjoyed the... I've, I started watching even League D games because there's a lot of excitement in there absolutely love the Nations League. It's a great idea. Get rid of all those friendlies. I don't need friendlies. I need competition. And even if we, it can be improved, we need a little bit more spectators there. But it can definitely be improved. But I think it's a great idea and it's here to stay. I really, really, really hope that it's here to stay. I know I want to go against all the naysayers. It's better than the friendlies. And, you know, teams like Italy... Uh, try to find their way in the Nations League and that's also a valid way. Um, so yeah, 
Nations League. I absolutely liked it. I totally enjoyed it. It was a little bit exhausting because, you know, games get kind of late-ish. Uh, so at the end of each Nations League week, I was a little bit exhausted because I didn't get too much sleep. But other than that, I absolutely love the Nations League. My number seven moment was this year's Serie A run-in. And this was kind of in a few days all condensed together. When Napoli beat Juventus. I mean, Napoli was always on Juventus' heels. And I think Juventus usually had a four-point lead. And then Napoli beat Juventus in Turin. With a thunderous Koulibaly header. Uh, it was an absolutely great, absorbing game. One of the best games this season, I have to say. Um, and so Napoli gets the winner and is only one point behind Juventus and has the slightly easier schedule. Next up, Inter playing at home to Juventus. The rivalry between Inter and Juve is huge. Inter goes down, Inter comes back, seemingly has won it, 2-1, on the streets of Naples, they, I assume they have already been dancing, and Juve pulls out two goals in the last minute, thunderous blow, a thunderous blow, even if it was, would have been a draw, it would have been fine, Juve winning this one was an absolute blow to Napoli, and then they lose to Fiorentina 3-0, and everything's uh, done and done and does it, but for those few days, this was so exciting because all the other leagues were boring and decided. Uh, so from that, uh, this was really exciting. This year's Serie A is not that great. I hope that some other leagues uh, looking at you, La Liga looking at you, England, there's a little bit more excitement there. Number six, the German fall from grace. Who saw that coming? I mean, there were slight signs. Spain dominated them. Uh, that's clear. In the in the, in the friendlies, Brazil got a win, but it was not the first string squad. Austria beat them. They only beat, uh, beat Saudi Arabia, but you know this seemed like German, the typically German mode. Uh, save your card for the last. Uh, the one thing that was kind of unprecedented is how they handled the Özil Gündoğan Erdogan affair. Uh, which was really, really poorly handled. And uh, they were just not on with the pulse of the times here. It was a very poor um, poor action by those players, although I understand why they do it. I mean, it is the president of their second home country. Uh, but still, could have been handled much better by the German FA. They completely kind of wiped away that, you know, the immigrant background and all that kind of stuff of those two players. Um, and But you still thought Germany is going to get it together. And then the World Cup rolls around and Mexico destroys Germany. There was not much coming from Germany. Mexico completely dominated Germany in that game. Never saw the coming. A year ago, an, uh, basically an under-21 squad beat uh, Mexico 4-1 and now Mexico is beating the first team squad. Something was not quite right. Then they get a lucky last-minute winner against Sweden. Sweden did everything to at least deserve a draw. They should have gotten a penalty. They, they could have put the game away. But then you thought, okay, Germany gets this winner. Germany is going to come back. And then against South Korea, nothing. This was... Absolute capitulation. And I'm sorry that this wonderful German away jersey is now always remembered in infamy because it was worn for no apparent reason again in that game against South Korea. Uh, and South Korea even winning it with I mean they had a few chances. Germany dominated proceedings. Uh, a, an earlier version of Germany would have made the goals somehow. It never came. It never came when Germany exits the World Cup. Something that was unthinkable. Uh, similar unthinkable as Italy in 2010. But I think even more because Germany was that dominant over the past few years. And I didn't see, I did not see this coming at all. I mean, there were slight signs, but I didn't see this coming. I am actually one of the few that is happy that Jogi Löw stays on because I think he has the chance to get uh, Germany back. I really think he does. Although in the Nations League, it took them. He took him two, two games and, and the bad performances continued there. 
but they got two home draws against France and the Netherlands and were beaten. I mean, France really dominated Germany in their home game. Uh, probably Germany should have gotten something against France at home. I uh, probably would have deserved to win against the Netherlands too. So it was kind of unlucky results, but you could see there's a change already happening. And maybe this is what Germany uh, will need. Just focus a little bit more. That Özil uh, stepped down, caused another media opera. Uh, yeah. Very poorly mishandled, but that storyline, it's a negative one, I admit. Um, it would have made me a lot happier years ago. Uh, now I am just watching on in awe and wonder how can this happen? The Germany who had everything so together for the entire decade suddenly poof, it's all downhill. Number five. I said it Messi playing out of his mind and not winning the uh, Ballon d'Or. Uh, which shows how weird the Ballon d'Or is. Um, Messi this year was out of this world. Most of the time he's playing. Forget the World Cup. The World Cup, he doesn't have the right setup there. Um, yes, everyone expects him to carry the team. Messi, look at Barcelona. Messi needs equally good players around. For Barcelona, Messi was spectacular. Uh, scoring goals, scoring. I think he scored eight free kick goals. I mean, the next one uh, is, I think, a two in all of Europe. Uh, he is running around, scoring goals left and right. I mean, his tally is in incredible. Barcelona dominated La Liga, dominated uh, Copa del Rey. They, If Messi would have played, I'm sure they would have had an undefeated season. I mean, um, that was one of the most stupid things uh, ever in this year happening. World Cup, I understand he didn't. Why didn't he win it? Well, obviously, because there was one down game. And yes, that one down, down game cost them dearly against Roma. I think Barcelona were the favorites to win the Champions League last year, probably even this year. They easily, they, if they would have beaten Roma, I think they would have won it. I'm quite convinced of that. Um, it just shows uh, everyone looks at trophies. Nothing is Luka Modric. But I think we can all agree that Messi and even Ronaldo had bigger seasons. But Messi for sure. Messi was playing out of his mind at his age. Just the trophies were missing. But individually, I think there was no better player in this year than Lionel Messi. Number four, the River Boca Copa Libertadores final. And the whole drama surrounding it. It was one big mess and it kind of confirms to me that I always thought if Barcelona plays Real Madrid in the Champions League final that this is too big for the competition. That's exactly what happened here. This game was simply too big for the competition. And uh, it doesn't help that Argentina generally in soccer is a big mess. You had everything in there. A postponed first game because of rainfall. Then uh, actually great game with all the atmosphere they had. Yeah, they want to have actually celebration. It was a great game. 2-2. Uh, Boca Cole, Cole could have won it. Then unfortunately due to the international break it lost a little bit momentum but it was slowly building up again. Boca bus is intact. We're not gonna have the game. Uh, then there's a big hustle and tussle. Are we playing the game? Will we play it next day? Uh, complete mismanagement. Absolutely horrible mismanagement and then the game is put in Madrid where at least it was a good game but it has lost this momentum and it reminded me a little bit about the five game Barcelona Real Madrid series or four game series in 2011 where it also got a little bit too much and this had the same feeling to it. Uh, finals are better if they're played without as much stake between two rivals. That was my takeaway from that. And maybe it helps that uh, starting next year the Copa Libertadores is played in a neutral venue. I still... Um, it showed everything. It showed the passion, it showed the ugly face of Argentina. It also showed how Comebol is trying to market this event at all costs. And we almost got a game that should never have been played. Fortunately, it was not played. Okay, 
Honorable mentions. Uh, my first one are the Peruvian fans at the World Cup. Uh, simply amazing what they did. Ronaldo's transfer to Italy lifted Serie A up in a whole different level. Uh, they have now a lot more Kaka coverage. Um, it also was good for Ronaldo. I think he's a much happier man there. The English resurgent at the World Cup, uh, English resurgence at the World Cup and thereafter. First of all, it was absolutely fresh to see what England was doing. I especially remember their corner kicks where they all line up on one row, uh, trying to do things differently. And having Gareth Southgate a uh, coach that is uh, not only impeccably dressed, but actually trying to do things differently. He knows about the limitations of the squad, but he's getting a lot out of, out of, out of his players. And I think the English resurgence is going to continue. There's a reason I bought an England shirt this year. They actually, I actually really liked England watching this year. Then, a little bit surprising, probably for some, but uh, Red Bull Salzburg's run to the semi final was a big story here in Austria, and I actually was also excited about it. That came a little bit out of nowhere. Um, we all know that Red Bull Salzburg is a great team, but that they make it to the semi finals and were so close to the final. I mean, that corner kick should never have been given in uh, overtime and I think Salzburg probably could have gotten the third goal, should have gotten the third goal, they had chances uh, galore. Um, so yeah, that was a biggish moment and I really don't like Salzburg. But when they play in Europe, I actually got behind this team. I'm afraid to admit it. The other thing, uh, Belgium in the knockout stage at the World Cup. The games against Japan and against Brazil were two of the most exciting games at the entire World Cup and Belgium showed everything they they, uh, they have. They finally delivered on the promise. Yes, France completely shut them down, but that's a different story. Uh, Belgium was one of the highlights at that World Cup. Number three, the knockout stage of the Champions League this year. Yes, I think it was the wrong winner uh, in the Champions League. Real Madrid winning, that was probably the low light. But the quality from the quarterfinals on, Real Madrid Juventus, Real winning 3-0 in Turin with Ronaldo scoring a great goal. And then Juve turning this almost around, only a penalty, which probably, yeah, slightly contested, but I think it was a right penalty, saw Real Madrid through. High drama. Liverpool against City. Liverpool dominating City with great soccer. And then uh, even in Manchester, Although they lost, I think they totally deserved going on there. Great game. Uh, Barcelona-Roma, a little bit the reverse of Juve against Real. Um, Barcelona 4-1 winners. Everyone thought they're through and then Roma pulls out the performance of the ages. Um, knocks out Barcelona and kills Messi of any chance of uh, getting a good award this year. So that was also a great game. The semifinals continued. The struggle between Bayern and... Real Madrid, where I can only say Real Madrid escape. Yes, they were probably better in the first game. I gotta give it to them. But in the second game, Bayern had everything going for them. And then they make a stupid mistake that Bonsema, uh, what what was the goalkeeper's name? Forget it now. Uh, that Bonsema takes advantage of. And from that moment on, no chance anymore. Bayern Real is one of those great matchups. Um, where I don't really like both teams, but it's something to behold. And yeah, I think Bayern should have won that one. They were right there. They were right there. And then the final, uh, equally, it was not the greatest final, but there were storylines. There were Ramos injuring Salah. Then uh, Karius' mistake after uh, Ramos' headbutt that we see now. And uh, the mistake by Karius, two mistakes uh, that are horrible. But, you know, if you have a concussion, yeah. Everyone will remember the, the mistakes, but I think there's an explanation, but uh, I think it destroyed his career. The wonderful goal by Bale, I s it is right up there with the Zidane goal in 2002. And Zidane winning uh, now three Champions Leagues in, in, in a row. That, 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 that is the incredible thing. So yeah, there was a lot to like in the Champions League. They showed that it's the best competition in the world bar now. Yes, wrong winners, best competition in the world. Number two, this is now very personal to me, the Lusk year. Over the year, Lusk was the second best team in Austria with a budget that is a 
best a fifth. I think it's even much less than Salzburg's budget. Yes, there's a huge difference, but Lusk over the entire year was the second best team in Austria. They finished, I think, fourth in the league. Uh, we were promoted and we played great. We had two win runs that were unprecedented. Seven games in a row and then uh, in fall six games in, in, in a row. I remember a five-game winning streak uh, back in 98 when we had the last great team. And this was even better. And the nice thing is that there is structure behind the team. There is a plan. Um, the coach has full control over the team. We actually have a very deep squad it is just all going up and now maybe we hopefully gonna build a stadium uh which is something that we should have done 20 years ago but yeah uh lusk really looks well and that makes me happy and for the it's probably for the first time in in, in my life that maybe the second but it feels like usually i was a milan fan because lusk was so painful and now it's the other way around that Lask is actually keeping me in high spirits and Milan is really painful to watch. So Lask season, that was my personal highlight this year. And I only, uh, the only thing I'm... Uh, yeah, I even forgot the Europa League, where we almost eliminated Besiktas. Lillestrøm was dominated. Uh, all good things around. And maybe next year, with some luck, I think. But I still think it's all possible. We play Champions League qualification. I mean... Unheard of. In 2013-14, we were playing in the third league. So for me, that's incredible. And the number one moment, World Cup, France winning the World Cup. Honestly, I've never seen a team having so little trouble winning a World Cup. I know it's a big statement. France didn't play well. It was They had only one exciting half, and that was the second one against Argentina, I think, where they really went all out. And the potential that's there is amazing. But with their rock-solid defense, a rock-solid game plan, I always felt France is not struggling the entire World Cup. They had to concentrate a little bit against Belgium. They had to hold the Croatians at bay, and the game went a little, a little bit. It was all easy for them. And the squad is so young. Unbelievable. Uh, I still want to say there's the curse on the world champions. So don't. But I think this is a squad that's here to stay for a while. And France coming is really coming back out of the low levels that they had at the beginning of the decade. Um, they should have probably won Euro 2016 on home soil. And I think that motivated them even more. I can say this was a very concerted effort of France. As I said, never playing absolutely great, except on rare occasions they could show what they can do. And I would really love to see uh, at the next years that France lets loose and really gives us the full power of um, Mbappé unleashed. But the way they won this World Cup... It almost seemed effortless to me. That's what I remember from that one. Well, those were my top 10 moments of the year. Let me know your top 10 moments. Or what were your uh, moments that you remember best uh, from this year? And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you would change here. Also, subscribe to my channel right around here. And check out the playlist that I'm posting here. And I will talk to you next year. Hopefully sometime soon.